Dynamic partitioning allows the operating system to make new partitions for each process or memory request. The size of the partitions exactly matches the size of the request being made. Let's look at a series of memory requests. As before, we reserve the first 8 megabytes of memory for the operating system, but now we have several processes making memory requests in this order. Process 1 requests 3 megabytes, then process 2 requests 15, then process 3 requests 10 megabytes, and then process 4 will request 5 megabytes. Let's see how these processes fill out memory. When the first memory request comes in, we dynamically create a partition of just the right size, exactly 3 megabytes to hold process 1. When process 2's request comes in, we set up a partition of size 15 megabytes. And this process continues with processes 3 and 4. Because each partition exactly fits each process, there is no internal fragmentation. However, keep in mind that processes only remain in memory until they finish executing. Let's see what happens when some processes finish, but more show up. We will now carry out this sequence of events. Process 3 completes. That means it will be erased from memory, and that space will become available to other processes. Next, process 5, a new process, appears and requests 6 megabytes. Now, there are actually two different places we can place process 5. Either here, where there are 10 available megabytes, or here, where there are 7 available megabytes. The decision of where to put process 5 depends on something called a placement algorithm. We'll return to this topic at the end of the video. But for now, let's simply assume that process 5 is placed here. Next, process 1 completes, which means we erase this spot from memory. Finally, process 6 arrives and requests 11 megabytes. But remember, these must be contiguous regions of memory, at least in this memory allocation scheme. So we have 3 megabytes available here, 4 left here, and 7 left here. We do not have 11 contiguous mem megabytes of memory. Now, we do have 11 megabytes in total across all the empty space on the disk. This is an example of external fragmentation. The fragmentation is external because there are regions of empty space that are external to all predefined partitions. However, this empty space can't be effectively used because it is not contiguous. It is fragmented. External fragmentation can be dealt with via a process called compaction. Compaction involves compacting memory by pushing all occupied regions of memory up into the unoccupied regions of memory until there is only one unoccupied region of memory at the end of memory, like so. This is what memory looks like after compaction. Now there's plenty of room in memory to service process 6's request for 11 megabytes. Although compaction solves our problem, it should be noted that compaction is computationally expensive and best avoided if possible. Compaction is less likely to be needed if we have an effective placement algorithm. So we will now talk about various different placement algorithms that can be used with dynamic partitioning. The four different placement algorithms I'll be discussing are first fit, next fit, best fit, and worst fit. We see here four identical memory layouts 
that have some amount of external fragmentation. We will now see how each of these different placement algorithms handles a sequence of memory requests differently by placing these requests in different places. Here is the sequence of memory requests. First, a process 7 will request 4 megabytes, then process 8 will request 6, then process 9 will request 2. Let me first briefly review how each of these placement algorithms works. First fit simply scans memory from the top until it finds a chunk of memory that can store the amount of space requested by the process. Next fit is similar, except rather than starting at the beginning of memory every time, it will always start at whatever position the last allocation occurred. Therefore, for the sake of these examples, we will assume that the last process placed in memory was P5 right here. Best fit scans all empty slots in memory and finds the placement of the process that will lead to the least amount of external fragmentation within that one particular chunk of memory. In other words, it tries to find the chunk of memory that will fit the process best. In contrast, worse fit tries to find the chunk of memory that fits the process worst. This means it stores the process in the largest contiguous empty chunk of memory that can store the process. Let's go through these requests one by one. Process 7 requests 4 megabytes. First fit will simply place this in the first empty slot that fits it, which is right here. In contrast, next fit will place process 7 here, because this is the first empty slot of memory that is big enough to hold process 7. After placement of process 7, the algorithm must note that this is now the last placement that occurred into memory. Best fit scans all available slots, noting that there are 8 free megabytes here and 10 free megabytes here and 4 free megabytes here. So all of these slots can fit the 4 megabyte process, but if we subtract the 4 megabytes of process 7 from the empty space, we would be left with zero remaining megabytes of memory here. So this is the best fit for process 7. In contrast, the worst fit for process 7 is right here because 10 minus 4 leads a whole 6 free megabytes of memory. This is more unused space than the 0 or 4 unused megabytes that would have been left if we had placed process 7 here or here. The next process is process 8, which requests 6 megabytes. As before, first fit goes from the beginning through memory. This is the first empty chunk that it encounters, but there are only four free megabytes here. So we cannot place this six megabyte request there. Instead, we must place it here, which leaves four empty megabytes left over. When next fit tries to place process eight, it actually goes off the end of memory, but then loops back over to the beginning and resumes the search. Next fit is able to place process 8 here because it did not previously fill this slot with any process. Hence, there's still plenty of room left for this 6 megabyte process. There are now 2 megabytes left. We also update NextFit's awareness of where the last placement occurred. BestFit considers the options for process 8, 
seeing that there are slots of size 10 and 8 left. 8 minus 6 leaves 2 unoccupied megabytes, whereas 10 minus 6 leaves 4 unoccupied megabytes. So the better fit is to place process 8 here. Worst fit will also place process 8 here because its other options are this 6 megabyte space and this 4 megabyte space. This space does not fit the process and this space fits it too well. This slot right here is the worst fit available for process 8. We will now place process 9. This request only requires 2 megabytes. First fit will go through memory from the top as usual and once it sees this 4 megabyte slot it immediately fills it with process 9. Next fit starts its search from the previous allocation point but it immediately finds a 2 megabyte slot for process 9 right here. Best fit considers two available options, a 10 megabyte slot and a 2 megabyte slot. The 2 megabyte slot perfectly fits process 9, so it places the process right here. Worst fit considers three options, a 2 megabyte slot, a 6 megabyte slot, and a 4 megabyte slot. Placing this 2 megabyte process into this 6 megabyte slot leaves the most leftover empty space. Therefore, worst fit will place process 9 here. After just three process placements, each of these placement algorithms has resulted in a completely different distribution of processes throughout memory. So you can imagine that in the long term, each of them would behave very different given a sequence of memory requests, and given the sequence of processes that terminate. Although this approach is more flexible than fixed partitioning, it still obviously has many problems. Problems which have been addressed and improved on by other memory allocation approaches that will be discussed in future videos.